Planning a major destination ski trip this winter? With nearly 3,000 skiable acres and elevations of up to almost 13,000 feet, Breckenridge has long been an incredibly popular choice. Breck gets a lot of things right, with high alpine bowls, diverse slopes, and an excellent resort town. But is this Colorado resort really the right fit for everyone? In this video, we'll go through Breckenridge's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, please consider helping us out by liking this video and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of our content. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to make them in the comments below. Breckenridge really stands out thanks to the diversity of its terrain. The resort has essentially every terrain type you can think of, from regular trails, to glades, to wide open bowls. Breckenridge consists of five mountains in a row, peaks 6 through 10, as well as three distinct base areas. This setup delivers an exceptionally wide footprint and substantial acreage for a wholly front-facing resort. Breckenridge's snow totals are strong, matching those of upper-tier front-range destinations. The resort sees its fair share of powder days each winter, especially later in the core season. Even some good April storms aren't out of the ordinary. But even if a season gets off to a rough start, Breckenridge employs snowmaking in multiple mid and lower mountain areas to ensure a resilient base layer. A couple of Breckenridge areas cater to beginners, but the resort ultimately isn't the best for less experienced visitors. The lower part of Peak 9 contains the resort's most popular beginner terrain, including the only green trails directly serviced by express lifts. This area contains an abundance of green slopes, but no blue or black alternatives for more aggressive skiers. This causes an unwelcome mix of ski traffic on all trails here and can be unsettling for those learning. The less trafficked Rips Ride and Snowflake pods on Peak 8 are much more insulated, but they're small with limited terrain. Breck is not the best mountain for beginner to intermediate progression, and none of Breck's greens can even be accessed from mid-mountain lifts. It is worth noting that for the 2022-23 season, Breck is upgrading its Rips Ride lift to a high-speed quad, which could change the experience here. Breckenridge offers a much wider array of intermediate terrain. Blue Runs cover the vast majority of lift service Peak 6 and 7 acreage in a sizable portion of Peaks 8 and 9. Most of this terrain consists of below treeline cruisers, but the upper Peak 6 area provides a unique opportunity for intermediate bowl skiing. Most blue trails are typically rated for their difficulty, but the Peak 6 blues are a bit harder than the rest, with pitches that are frankly comparable to some easier groomed blacks elsewhere at the resort. Breck's intermediate runs are mostly groomed consistently, but a few blues, chiefly on Peak 6, can build up moguls. There are a few blues that are partially ungroomed on one side and groomed on the other, making for good environments to practice bumps. Breckenridge's freestyle terrain is still competitive, but it's nowhere near as crazy as it used to be. Three sizable terrain park areas boast features ranging from small to large, including boxes, rails, jumps, and a banked slalom. However, the extra-large features Breckenridge was once known for are now a thing of the past. Most notably, the old freeway terrain park, with its 22-foot superpipe, has been put out to pasture. The vast majority of Breck's harder terrain lives in mid or upper mountain areas. Guests will find the best below treeline black trails and glades off the mid mountain E chair, 6 chair, and Falcon Super chair, with a few steep groomers off the ladder that allow for serious speed runs. The Peak 8 Super Connect services some great double blacks as well, but these can get windswept at times. These runs are steep, mogly, and challenging but short compared to hard trails at places like Keystone and Vale. On many of these trails, it's common to get stuck on catwalks to get back to the nearest chairlift. A few of Breck's Peak 8, 9, and 10 blacks are a bit easier than the other similarly rated trails. These runs had a now decommissioned blue-black rating prior to 2010, and you can see which specific runs had the old rating by looking at an old trail map. Breck's advanced and expert upper mountain terrain consists of several high alpine bowls, and those willing to hike can get to barely track snow. But the resort's lift service bowl terrain is surprisingly extensive, and guests can often find hidden powder stashes with just a bit of traversing. Breckenridge's only extreme terrain requires hiking to reach, 
you won't find chutes or cliffs directly off the lifts. But once you're up here, you'll find that the lake chutes in six senses areas hold their own against the toughest in Colorado, with cornice lined entries, rock riddled lines, and essentially no room for error on the toughest runs. Breckenridge also offers easy access to backcountry terrain, which is completely unpatrolled and should not be entered without a guide for those unfamiliar. Breckenridge's bowls offer some of the highest lift service skiing in the world, boasting conveniently lappable above treeline terrain. Bowls often maintain excellent snow preservation, and the unimpeded views of neighboring peaks are incredible on a nice day. But the terrain up here is heavily exposed to the elements, and wind can sometimes become intolerable. In addition, conditions at times are windswept and crunchy, and it's hard to tell what's ahead of you when flat light occurs. Some bowl areas, such as Imperial and the T-Bar, tend to stay closed for significant portions of the season due to these circumstances. The snow at Breckenridge is often best in mid-mountain areas, where the resort faces less wind exposure and sees generous accumulation throughout the season. Lower mountain areas typically see somewhat more variable conditions, but early season snowmaking ultimately provides resiliency and helps to lengthen the season. Due to its exposure, conditions can often become windy or stormy at Breckenridge, and temperatures tend to be a few degrees colder than at other Colorado resorts due to the elevation. Luckily, plenty of lodging facilities are present around the resort. Most major mid-mountain areas have lodges or huts, meaning you never have to ski far to get inside for a break. And don't be surprised if you need a break, because Breckenridge's altitude is incredibly high, even among Colorado resorts. Those not used to the elevation may find themselves struggling to exhibit energy here. Be sure to use caution before attempting anything risky, and be sure to drink lots of water. In recent years, one of the benefits about Breckenridge has been its spring skiing season. The resort now has one of the latest closing dates in Colorado, staying open through mid to late May. There is one catch, however. Breckenridge's staff aren't employed to continue in every resort area, and select mountain zones gradually close starting in mid-April, even if conditions are still appropriate for skiing. Breckenridge's lift infrastructure is mostly modern, but it could be a bit better logistically. On the plus side, most areas are served by high-speed lifts, and the expansive base town offers lift or gondola service from faraway areas, although the parking lots in town are no longer free. Capacity at the crowded Peak 8 base is quite high, with two express lifts and two fixed grip helper lifts, and the new Freedom Super Chair on Peak 7 has significantly relieved crowds in that area. And some lifts here are just plain unique. The Snowflake lift has an unusual 45 degree turn in the middle on the uphill side, in a much more complicated turn that has to be seen to be believed on the return. In the Imperial Express Super Chair is the highest lift in all of North America. But there are some issues. Some loading areas are inconsistently placed, especially at Peak 9, causing crowd flow problems. Two thirds of the Peak 8 Super Connect's chairs load at the base station, so lines at the popular mid station become lengthy. And lines at Breckenridge's main beginner lifts are just plain horrendous with the Quicksilver Super Chair and Five Chair being profound choke points due to the general lack of green terrain elsewhere at the resort and the hidden nature of the base of the Rips Ride Chair. These logistical problems especially hurt on weekends and holidays when the resort tends to get heavily trafficked. On days like this, lift lines tend to become really long, especially at the bases. If you're looking to do laps on a peak day, Breckenridge is not the place. The resort's setup also makes it relatively arduous to navigate between mountain areas. From basically anywhere on Peak 9 or Peak 10, you have to take the Peak 8 Super Connect lift to get to Peaks 6, 7, or 8. Skiing from Peak 8 to Peak 7 requires navigating quite a bit of flat terrain or taking a gondola between the two base areas. The only access to the Imperial Express lift comes from the heavily exposed T-Bar or the slow Chair 6 lift, which is confusingly actually on Peak 8. In addition, access to Peak 6's Kensho Super Chair requires either a lengthy traverse or a ride up the slow, fixed grip Zendo Chair. And if you don't want to take the Zendo Chair, finding that traverse is just plain confusing. In fact, the only entryway is hidden behind the Pioneer Crossing restaurant. The resort's lifts close strictly at 4pm, so you'll want to make sure to end up at the right base at the end of the day. 
but it's not all bad getting around Breckenridge. On the plus side, getting from lower numbered peaks to higher numbered ones isn't as difficult, and at least one base area is accessible from every part of the mountain. Additionally, all major lower mountain chairlifts include helpful safety bar mounted trail maps. Breckenridge is owned by the same parent company as Vail, Beaver Creek, and Keystone, and tickets are easily exchangeable for days at those mountains for a small fee. If you get an Epic Pass, you can hit up all of those resorts with no exchange needed. Many of these resorts are accessible from the town of Breckenridge by public transportation. Breckenridge offers a variety of lodging options both slope side and in town. Each base area offers upscale ski-in, ski-out hotels and condos, some of which have pools and hot tubs. The bulk of lodging in town is only a short walk from the Snowflake Lift or Breck Connect Gondola, and some ski trails go directly downtown, offering easy ski-in access. Many hotels and condos are walking distance from attractions in town. For those looking to save money or meet people, there are two hostel options in town as well. For most, Breckenridge's size, terrain diversity, and conveniently accessible bowls will deliver a well-rounded package. But the altitude here can be overwhelming for some. Conditions in the heavily exposed bowls can be hit or miss, and navigating this wide resort can be exasperating. In addition, the resort is a risky bet for key weekends and holidays due to its lift lines. Ticket prices are extremely steep, now cresting over $200 during peak times, making the cost of entry tough to justify if you don't have an epic pass. If you plan to come for a few days, consider staying in Breckenridge's excellent resort town and splitting your time with other close-by epic resorts. Now let's go through how Breckenridge stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Breckenridge sees the same high quality accumulation as its Colorado competitors and gets an 8 for snow. The resort enjoys great snow preservation thanks to its high elevation, but above treeline mountain zones are inconsistently open, and the resort gets a 7 for resiliency. Breckenridge has just over 2,900 skiable acres and is 4,300 acres from boundary to boundary, earning an 8 for size. Breckenridge has just about everything except extremely long mogul runs in lift serviced extremes and gets a 9 for terrain diversity. Breck's lift service footprint is a bit less tough than some competitors, but there are still some notable challenges and the hike to chutes are truly perilous and the resort earns an 8 for challenge. Breck has a pretty modern lift setup with a few fixed grip chairs in appropriate areas. Approximately 71% of the footprint is directly lift serviced, with the rest requiring hiking to reach, and the resort earns a 6 for lifts. Recent lift installations have helped, but base and beginner lifts are still serious choke points and the resort gets a 5 for crowd flow. Breck has convenient, well-placed facilities and gets an 8 in this category. The resort is not easy to get around, with multiple lifts and flat traverses required to get between select mountain areas and gets a 4 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Breckenridge's high alpine footprint really stands out, and the uppermost resort areas host truly incredible views of nearby front range peaks, earning the resort a 9 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 72, placing Breckenridge 9th in Colorado and 18th overall as of September 2022. Breckenridge has some resiliency and logistical problems that hurt it against the top tier of Colorado competitors but the resort still holds up well against nearby mountains such as Copper, Winter Park, and Keystone. Upcoming lift projects on Peak 8 have the potential to help bump up Breck's score in future seasons. For more information on Breckenridge and over 60 other destination ski resorts, check out peakrankings.com.